Hey guys, so last week a customer at work needed a low quantity run of a sheet metal part that had a custom inside bend radius. So I 3D printed a press brake tool out of PLA and it worked great. We ended up making 50 parts, which is what the order was for, and the tool didn't have any noticeable wear. So normally we would either buy a custom tool or in a case like this where it's fairly simple, we would just make one. But being able to 3D print several different tools overnight is a huge time saver. So in this video, I'm going to be testing a few different tools I printed by bending various thicknesses of steel and aluminum. So if you're wondering why all of the angles aren't going to be 90 degrees is because I don't want to spend the time adjusting the press brake depth for every thickness. So I'm just going to set up for one of the thicknesses and just run them all to the same depth. So as you can see, the press brake tools already exceeded my expectations because I didn't think it was going to be able to bend anything thicker than 13 gauge steel. So I'm going to go over to the shear and shear up some 12 gauge, 11 gauge and 10 gauge steel. Okay, so now I'm just going to test that same exact tool with the remaining thicknesses that I just cut. Okay, so it's clear that it handles up to 10 gauge steel without any issues, so I'm not even going to bother testing the other designs of this shape, so I'm just going to move on to the next type of tool. Okay, well I guess this tool also handles up to 10 gauge steel without an issue, so that's really good because this prints way faster than the other tool and they're both used for the same purpose. So I'm going to move on to the tool that is going to be the most likely to break, which is the gooseneck, and it's kind of an offset curb, and that gives it extra space to bend uh, an extra flange that needs to you know, come up and into the tool. Okay, so we finally got one to break, but this is still really impressive for an offset tool like this because of how the load is distributed. So I'm going to just move on to the same tool that I printed with more perimeters and see how it handles.
Okay, so this handles 10 gates just fine, but if you look very closely, you'll see that there is some deflection, so I probably wouldn't use a tool like this for steel this thick, but it's still promising for some of the thinner gauges. Okay, so now that I've tested as thick as I'm willing to go for this video, I'm going to take this tool and bend all the remaining material that I have and see what the tool life looks like after several consecutive bends with different thicknesses. So after several different bends, you can see that it is starting to wear a bit, but it's not very significant. And it's really promising for, you know, low quantity jobs and I'm really happy and impressed with how thick this has uh, actually gone up to. So I'm going to put a link in the description for two articles that really sparked my interest on this topic. So if you're interested in learning more about 3D printed press brake tooling, I recommend you reading those articles because there's a company, Cincinnati Tool, who actually manufactures press brakes as well as standard tool steel tooling. They have started testing and selling quick turnaround 3D printed tooling. And what's even better is that they're using standard FDM printers that you know most hobbyists would have access to. And they're using PLA and they've done testing with 14 gauge steel up to a thousand bins. So, um, but there's no reason I just can't print my own. All right, guys. Well, hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below, and I'll see you next time.